What's up guys, I'm John Borba, the host of Cardboard Conquest. Today I sat down with IGN's own Naomi Kyle and Kyle O'Connor, as well as Plat Hat Games designer Isaac Vega to celebrate two of our favorite things, zombies and cooperative tabletop games. You see, my buddy Isaac designed today's awesome gore-filled game. Join us as we try to keep the biters at bay in the dead of winter. Zombies provide an endless horde of entertainment that has devoured a large portion of my brain over the years, and I couldn't be more happy about it. Which is why I anticipated the release of this month's game with an unstoppable hunger. Dead of Winter is a semi-cooperative game with a potential traitor element set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where players cower together behind the fortifications of a crumbling compound, trying to tamp down the fears that their lives rest on a knife edge and death is literally tearing down the walls. But before we start, let's clarify what you need to know before jumping in. We will each have personal and secret objectives as well as share a common objective. Often the secret objective will require completing the shared goal. However, there's a chance that one of us will be given a betrayal objective card. Maybe, maybe That's not. That's exactly what a traitor would say. <laughs> Which almost always means that we must work in secret to screw over the rest of our friends without being noticed. There are many ways to do this. Five bucks on the army. <laughs> we will control a small following of survivors within a colony. These factions can grow or shrink as players come across new survivors and suffer through the loss of friends amidst this fickle world. A big part of this game is resource management. We have to feed the colony, make sure they don't wallow in their own filth, and deal with imminent crises, all in order to keep morale high. You'll see all of this in action, so let's sink our teeth in. Uh, we have several different phases during our turn, but the first one that we do is we reveal the crisis. Our crisis right now is unending hordes. We need... That sounds great. <laughs> At the beginning of each round, we'll reveal the current crisis that requires a number of a certain type of card, or really terrible things are going to happen to us. So we are going to move next to the next step, which is roll action dice. Each of us have three dice. We have one for each character we control and one for ourselves. I rolled exceptionally well. I rolled really poorly. As did I. Action dice are used to do exactly what it sounds like, complete actions. You need to roll a certain value or higher on the dice to complete certain actions based on character stats. This hunky Robert Downey Jr. lookalike is David Garcia. This number at the top right is his influence. This is used to determine who your group leader is and who will die first when zombies attack. The number below it is his attack value. This means that in order to kill a zombie, he must use an action die of four or higher. Below that is the search value. In order to search, David needs a three or higher. And down here at the bottom is David's character specific ability, which sometimes require a die and sometimes does not. David's, for example, does not, which makes him extra hunky. But for right now, it is my turn. And you're gonna draw a crossroad card. You are gonna card, draw this crossroads card and read it. All right, crossroad cards are my favorite part of the game because they propel the story. They all have a condition that needs to be met in order to happen. But if it does, serious freaking crap is gonna go down, whether it be awful or great. Let's check one out. All you right. walk past the cathedral <laughs> and you realize that no one's been inside since the colony formed. It's certainly not the most tempting of targets, but you can think of something that might be of use. Option one. Do I read the options? Just yes. yes. You mount the steps and the heavy front door groans as you pull it open. You spend 15 minutes searching before you find a small room holding the prize you wanted. Half a dozen bottles of communion wine. So, yes. But as you move through <laughs> the dark, as you move through the dark hallways towards the exit, a foul smelling shape slams into you. The priest's corpse gnashes his teeth, nearly taking off your nose. Looks like you were judged and found wanting. You slam the thing's head into the tile floor repeatedly until one gory wreckage remains. You dust yourself off and wonder, did I just say a cheesy one-liner in a fight? That's badass. <laughs> Roll exposure on the move survivor twice. If the survivor isn't killed by the exposure, gain one morale. Not worth the risk, you think, and keep moving. Nothing happens. Obviously, we made some zombie pudding to get that wine. Crossroad cards also often call for a vote on the resolution of issues at the colony. This is the colony. The colony is home base where we keep the helpless survivors, food, and our own filth, while we use our characters to venture out into the waste to gather materials for survival. There are six other locations to visit in this game. The police station, the grocery store, the school, the library, the hospital, and the gas station if you want a six pack and a Slim Jim. All of these are easily overrun by the undead if you don't watch your back. I guess I want to take a risk and just Ooh, see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Let's roll them twice. Especially if you're fine. <laughs> Dead. It's at these locations that you will search to get the items you need to deal with crisis cards, keep from starving, and to protect yourself from becoming zombie kibble. 
It adds 12 zombies if you fail <laughs> oh. to the colony, not everywhere, just there. So that would just murder everybody yeah. there. When you travel to these locations, you will roll an exposure die. There are four possible outcomes on this die. You can roll a blank side, which means nothing bad happens. Yes. You're yes. good? Yes. Oh, all right, all right, all right. We're, we're good. Whoa. You can roll this happy little symbol, which means you take a regular wound. Come on. Oh, All right, no. that's fine. That's, that's a bite. Okay, that's just a bite. Just a, bite. Just a wound. Take one little wound. I thought for sure I was dead. Or this festive snowflake, which means you take a frostbite wound that gives you another wound every round until you heal. When you take a wound, uh, characters can only take two. On the third one, they will die. I can I heal do. myself? Can yes, but only with medicine. I have a medicine. Well, then you can use a medicine. Oh, there you go. Lastly, the Tooth Fairy's calling card here means you are bitten and your character immediately dies and turns on his friends. When a survivor stops surviving, morale goes down. When you can't feed the group for a turn, morale goes down. After you fail a crisis, morale goes down. If morale reaches zero, game over. We're all dead. Er, undead. Look, Dead of Winter is an awesome game. However, it is a really hard game a lot of the time. Fantastic. Okay, this is good. This is a good time. Watch the full playthrough at the link below. There's some tasty bits. On the full playthrough, we also announced the winners of from last month's giveaway of Betrayal at House on the Hill. In fact, I'm going to announce the other winner right now by pulling it out of this zombie candy dish. The winner is Jason Olson, who named the Wicked Were Rat Master Phineas Piccolino, and I made a note here that he wrote me a pretty extensive backstory. So thanks, Jason. You could win stuff by watching our show as well. This month, we're giving away a ton of stuff. We're giving away copies of Dead of Winter, limited release characters for the game, some other plaid hat games, and actual plaid hats that Isaac brought to us. If you want a chance to win, send me an email to cardboardconquest at IGN.com with your choice zombie weapon, and you can have a shot at winning stuff on next month's episode. And that's about it. You can pick up Dead of Winter at the link below, and for all your board gaming needs, stay tuned to Cardboard Conquest right here on IGN.